Hello everyone, we're back with coverage of round 7. Yeah, actually today is the final round, today we'll know who the Lebanese chess champion will be. Um, but yeah, I fell a bit behind on producing these videos, so well, let's get on with round 7 now. Um, uh, and I encourage you to watch all of these videos, I'll try to be quick with uh, releasing them. And yeah, so we have over here Akram. He drew Mr. Antoine Assis. Let's leave this game till later. Let's go with another game. Let's go with the Habash against Aid game. Okay. So Habash plays e4, c5, knight c3, d6. Standard Sicilian. And now this is not so standard. This is. Um, do they call it the center, center uh, game in the, the Sicilian? Let me check says it's just a close Sicilian but yeah it's it's reminiscent of the center game and other openings um yeah the point of this is to go for a system that Magnus Carlsen plays after knight c6 you could go bishop b5 and that's an entirely different opening but after queen d2 this is actually a system Magnus Carlsen plays and it's known as the Carlsen system and the point is to do this and castle long and just attack so this is actually what happens he goes a6 okay all of this is normal by both sides standard stuff not nothing special here you're just defending pieces a6 also designed to prevent some of this and some of that and also prepare some of this so yeah um, the um, the engine here does suggest knight f3 and follow it up with g4 which is rather interesting, but of course the point of the system is to play f4 and attack that way. And this is what occurs. b5, counterpunch, since your opponent is castled here. Now black, um, in this game he eventually does castle as such. But maybe an option was to just stay in the center and try to attack white. But you know, white did commit to castling here, but he has a lot of firepower, so it's not like attacking wh uh, white uh, is going to yield that many benefits anyway. Because he is, he did show the intention, he is castled queen side, you can attack him on the queen side, but he has such a developmental edge with all of these pieces, like th these are some scary pieces, huh? so yeah, it won't be that effective. Okay, so he plays bishop d3, normal move, but already here he could have been more aggressive with g4. Of course, knight, knight takes g4, knight g3, and rook g1 is coming, and this isn't a concern. Now, b4 here could be an option to try to win e4. Um, of course, if you move here, I, uh, this pawn is rather important, and you attack the queen as well. Um... Actually, is that the best move here? Would knight takes e4 be the best move? Because I haven't checked this. Let's, yeah, okay, knight takes e4. Just briefly with the engine. Okay, but here you've hit with g5, and the point, aren't we losing a piece here? Well, it turns out we're attacking two pieces here, so we're not. So bishop b7 is played, takes, takes, queen d2. And yeah, white should be better here, but of course black has succeeded in trading quite a few pieces. So this is... In an achievement to be honest so I like bishop d3 g4 is just another option but bishop d3 keeps the pieces more pieces on the board and by the way something I did not mention here if you take obviously check uh, we take with check and we're even um, forking these two pieces keep in mind this fork for these two pieces because that will happen actually it will happen will it happen in this round or in a later round no, it happens in later round. Sorry, I was analyzing a later round. <laughs> yeah, this happens in another Wissam Eid game, but it actually doesn't happen in the game. It's just a, just analysis of the game. Anyway, <laughs> so bishop d3 was played, and now castling was an option, and then you play this g4, and it's a fiesta. But instead he played b4, sensible as well. Knight a4 now, and e5. e5. No, you either castle here or you continue queenside development with bishop b7. e5 gives up too many squares and and Habash does the very smart thing, g4. And now this pawn, this pawn pushes will be, ugh, will be so strong for white. And this is actually what happens in the game. So yeah, e5, giving up too many squares. 
And this is a running theme in Wissam Eid's games because actually against Samer in a later round he also played this f5 and lost. Yeah, spoilers, but yeah, that was also something I noticed. So anyway, castles occurs and now king b1. You can't just develop with knight f3. King b1 you can never almost go wrong with this move, but sometimes playing king b1 when you're cast at queenside it's a prophylactic move, you always play it, but sometimes it could be a waste of time. And here I don't see the necessity of playing it. But okay, he, he plays king b1, it's fine. Bishop d7, and now knight f3. g4, and then playing knight f3 if knight takes g4 occurs, which I don't think it should, <laughs> was another option. But knight f3 is fine, of course, simple development first. a5, um, black is trying to crash through here, but a5 is the right, wrong way to go about things because you're never dislodging this knight. What you need to do is try to dislodge this knight. And after something like g4, for example, you play bishop c6. You don't really take here because, okay, you might think you're being clever and going to win this and blah blah blah, but yeah, white will just push through and his attack is incredibly quick. So bishop c6, rook h e1, keeping an eye on this pawn, it's an important pawn, you can't really afford to lose it, like for example this, thank you very much, right? Not really in our best interest to do this. Um, so we protect it, and now we take, take and play knight d7, preempting this g5. Again, you don't play this queen d7 though, be, don't try to be too smart. <laughs> because g5 is quite annoying. Um, so yeah, that was the option. a5 basically loses, I would say. <laughs> it's really tough to see how white will, how black will defend after g4. He tries knight e8, and now I don't get why g5 immediately was not played. Maybe he was afraid of some f6 or something. He goes h4 instead, which should be the more principled move, but it's a bit slower. And now f6, f6 just telling white please attack me instead knight the very strange knight b8 um, intending to relocate some pieces for example this yeah uh, white's black's task is almost impossible but that's what was warranted that he goes for f6 and yeah thank you very much check and check is also very important to make the king on the same file as this rook so sacrifices here for example are possible so I like that. Um, g5 now, and he plays knight a7. Pff, yeah, no. white is it's difficult to suggest anything. And here white plays knight h4, which should be winning, but h6 is much quicker. I will show you one line. Maybe he was afraid of g6, which would try to close down. But yeah, you just take here, takes back, and now play this. If the king defends g6, you can simply take, go queen h2. Um, this monster check is coming, don't forget this bishop is here. And if, for example, bishop g4, we just go h7, and we have this check, we have promotion, all of these stu all of this stuff. Even bishop g8 followed by promotion. So yeah, this is completely lost. But okay, it's a bit difficult to calculate all of this. Knight h4 is the safer option. And again, you see what, what I was talking about with these combined forces. He sacks, but that's really not enough. Of course, you can never take because of this. Actually, here we have. Um, whoops! I didn't mean to turn on the engine. Yeah, Queen H2, but we have the more common mating pattern I wanted to show with this. Yeah, uh, um, because spacebar turns on the engine. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, he played King G8, but now comes check, and um, here. Was there an improvement here? Yeah, I think he could have uh, delayed, uh, like he could have taken and played g6, but okay, it doesn't really matter, white is completely winning. Some fun stuff over here, and he just trades, and yeah, I mean, look at this king, even if wa black is able to get into an endgame, <laughs> like the this king is so, so, so cooked. So yeah, the game doesn't actually last much longer. Yeah, and uh, simply resigns. There's nothing to be done, actually. White will uh, break through eventually. He's just too much material up, and the spawn, <laughs> really, crushing. So yeah, some missed chances for Wissam to defend, but overall a nice attack by Mr. Habash.
Okay, let's go to the which game do we go to? Let's go to the Mudallal Abdul Aziz game. That was quite interesting. So starts off as a Nimzo Larson. Quite interesting, right? And we get to see this double fiend Keto. At any point, white can choose to take and double black spawns, and we go into it an entirely different type of game. But that was not tried. Okay, so bishop g7, knight f3, c5. And now he goes for the very strange a4. c4 is much more natural. Prepare some of this later on, or maybe even d3. And you know, just control some key squares. Um, a4, I don't really know about a4. Just seems weakening on the queen side and not really le relevant to the position and a bit slow develop development wise. Anyway, he played it and now he played knight c6. There's no reason I think yet to commit to knight c6. Maybe you want to choose a setup with knight bd7. I don't know. Keep your options open and play castles instead. You're definitely going to castle as black. You're not going to castle long, are you? No. And that's not how castle is long works. That's how castle long works. Okay, so knight c6. And now bishop b5 asking the knight some important questions. And that's answered by I don't care about bishop takes c6, which you should not really care about. And he castled instead. Now queen c7 came, and now he played bishop takes c6. Now after queen c7, like I mean here, like what... If you want to play bishop takes c6, it's because to double your uh, your opponent's pawns. You give up the bishop pair, but you double your opponent's pawns. But here, he played queen c7, and after bishop takes c6, you're not doubling your opponent's pawns. So it doesn't really make sense. And actually, um, yeah, so he should have played rook e1 and played for this e4, e5 stuff. And actually here, after bishop takes c6, black did have the option of playing b takes c6 with the idea of playing d6 followed by bishop g4. But okay, queen takes c6 makes perfect sense. You, d you played queen c7 to not double your pawns, so b takes c6 is kind of logical. It's a good move, but it's kind of logical for a human to play like that. So anyway, d3, and now the option of playing c4 and queen c2 is again possible, but after b6, knight bd2, bishop b7, he goes for e4 instead, which is fine. Again, c4 was an option, even rook e1, just kind of playing slowly. These kind of man moves, like rook e1 in this position, they're quite useful um, because you're just kind of waiting around and your rook doesn't really belong on f1 anyway, and you just give yourself more options. So, yeah. Instead, he went for e4 here and not c4, and this goes into a different type of dire direction. He goes rook a d8, now black's plan will be just to push through d5 and make use of this queen battery, and this is what happens in the game. c4 is played, stopping d5 for the moment, but e6 comes, and now he tries e5 as a way to stop d5, but here he simply had rook e1, again, ask some important questions, play it slow. Um, for example, after rook e1, if d5 does occur, now you can consider this, consider that, consider this, consider even this, which is not good actually, but yeah. Instead he forces matters with e5, but now after knight g4 he has some problems. Um, again rook e1 makes a bit of sense to protect e5, because remember there is a tactic now, if you play something like this, um, this is a possibility, because this is met by hello by hello so yeah he plays knight e4 instead going for complicated tactics again rook e1 was a possibility um but then he is met with queen c7 but actually in the game he had the option of playing d5 making use of the fact that en passant is not possible so here knight f6 check has to be played but after takes takes and now d4 um, white is going to lose the pawn and he's going to be a pawn down basically. So d5 was a very smart option here, but it was not found. Instead, queen c7 was played, adding more pressure to d4, uh, to e5, and this also makes a ton of sense as well. So he played rook e1, kind of uh, just protecting some sigma jigs by uh, by not opposing the queen's defense of the pawn takes, takes, bishop takes, 
Um, but b unfortunately, Bishop takes basically loses. Turns into Knight of Six check, discovering the Rook's attack here. And after takes, takes, and Rook c8, um, White should be much better because his mating attack seems better than Black's mating attack. Because Black's mating attack can always be stopped with f3, while White's cannot. Um, going back here instead of bishop takes e5, he should have went with bishop takes e4. Removing this knight, he does remove his prized bishop, but after this, we go into a lot of complications. Knight takes f7 is forced. We won't analyze the complications here, but yeah, suffice, yeah of course you can check what happens after this. Um, really complicated lines, but of course d6, you just can't move back because of this, so... So yeah, just a really complicated line would arise here. But it's much better than what happened in the game because here effectively black is lost. Instead here even going for rook d8, um, trying to prepare e5 as a pawn sacrifice, this was perhaps an idea for black. Okay, but he goes rook c8, which is a bit of a strange place for a rook behind this pawn. Yeah, so he goes queen d2 obvious you want to come in through this door queen c6 threatening mate and now the obvious f3 makes a whole load of sense instead he went for rook e4 which was like okay i get he wants to pull, perhaps play some of this or some of that at some point but you can't really do without f3 in this position and actually much much later did he yeah, much, 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 much later he played f3. So already he should have played f3 here. Yeah, um, so e5 here as a pawn sacrifice again. And now queen g5. You really don't want to take this pawn um, uh, with the bishop, for example, because you just give black too much activity. And also the possibility of playing f6, of course, which is what you should have played, f3. Um, okay, he goes queen g5 protecting and in initiating some of these ideas but now rook c e8 with this idea was possible instead he goes rook f e8 um, which sh should be better in principle because you're not blocking in this rook but for tactical reasons the other using the other rook was better so let's see why that was so queen h4 and now h5 cometh and yeah, instead of what he played in the game, which was g4, which is almost uh, losing, he should have played queen g5. And after rook e6, bishop takes e5, threatening some of this again, and of course some of that. Um, there's d5 by black, complicating matters and uh, trying to open up the position. After c takes, queen takes, we have rook a, um, rook a e1, and yeah, this position should be much better for... Mr. White. Instead he goes for the really kind of tragic g4 and now just rook e6 and you have to play g5 because this bishop is attacked by these two guys so you can't afford to play something like this. And after g5 you're really closing off the position for white, uh, for black. So black is completely happy here because you know it's really far away for the queen to get in here. Now the queen is permanently blocked. And what happened after g4, you opened up for the black pieces. So not so good. d5, very principled. You want to open up the position to let your forces into the game. This is exactly what he's doing. Takes. And now queen g3. Um, yeah, just attacking e5. And now the very brilliant tactical shot, c4, was missed the point of course you can't take with the d pawn so you have to take with the b pawn and now still rook takes c4 and after rook a e1 let's say you just take some pawns and f3 trying to block some of this you have queen c5 check and yeah white is black is much better he's up so many pawns probably winning and of course if you take there's queen h1 and again if you take here there's also queen h1 checkmate so your queen is defending queen g2, but it's not preventing queen h1. So c4 was a really nice tactical shot. Instead he went rook c e8, but now after rook b1, defending b3, 
um, queen d7 and now he should have played rook e3 just defending this pawn and insinuating some of this he went rook h4 instead trying to insinuate some of these but this really isn't working so black just went ahead with e4 and now after d takes e4 the very strange the very strange rook takes e4 here why is this very strange because you're letting black uh, white back into the game because you're trading so many pieces after rook takes e4 here comes bishop takes e4 and uh, sorry <laughs> so you allow white to take on e4 instead you should have taken with the bishop and the point well after the random move by white he has to move the bishop uh, he has to move the rook it's attacked you go here and now you're go going to come in with queen c6 you're going to come in with rook uh, e2 and there's absolutely nothing that white can do about this completely winning for black instead rook takes e4 allows rook takes e4 and now after rook takes e4 f3 this game is actually almost drawn now um, after bishop takes e4 we simply have rook e1 and white is completely fine i'm just going to trade more pieces with with bishops on the board it's not enough with rooks it's different because we have rook e2 and a lot of firepower so takes f3 rook e8 and now bishop a1 instead obviously rook e1 try to trade off if you're able to trade off the pair of rooks as we will see what happened in the game he was able to trade off the pair of rooks but should not have been allowed yeah that's actually um drawn when you're able to do that because even though you have the queen that can check and all of that the the opponent has a queen as well um here he tried bishop a1 insinuating some of these ideas but and those don't really work and they're too slow um so he should have played rook e1 tried to trade off okay bishop a1 and now he plays queen d3 and this is effectively a draw after rook e1 we'll go through the game but the last chance here was queen d2 threatening this all right threatening this and yeah overall just a really strong move let's and white doesn't have any moves by the way you you also like queen d3 you allow what happened to the game queen d3 you allow rook c1 for example or you allow rook e1 but queen d2 prevents both of these squares so yeah well, why doesn't have anything here if you play bishop f6 let's say going back admitting your mistake i have king h7 and rook e2 is coming same thing with h4 just a random move i have king h7 and rook e2 is coming by the way you don't play rook e2 immediately because of check and this will be a checkmate on h8 you can block bishop c8 you can block queen d8 you can block rook e8 but eventually you're going to go to h7 and i'm going to mate you with qu qu <laughs> queen h8 so yeah that was the last chance for Abdelaziz. maybe he mouse slipped with rook d3 but this was an over the board classical game and yeah now rook e1 and this is just a draw he tries to prevent queen e8 which would be shikosematos but yeah this is not enough tries to trade yeah, i'm just going to go through this game quickly a5 is a nice move to draw and yeah taris uh, defense is quite good he comes back with the king to defend against the two pawns and uh, actually Abdul Aziz even sacks a pawn here but yeah that's obviously not enough and soon enough a draw was agreed so yeah topsy-turvy game but uh, Tare had some good chances at some point but, yeah it was not to be okay the Samer game let's take a look at the Samer game so they play this hyper accelerated dragon and this is this queen a5 is a specialty of najjar castles for black is more common um at least in the master database on leeches but yeah as we've said many a time before um queen a5 is a specialty of mr najjar so queen a5 castles castles h3 all of this is theory and just normal moves so let's go through them quickly um, not the most theoretical, but it's been played before. And now queen e2. 
Queen d2, a more natural move in the Sicilian, has been tried before. Queen e2, we're almost in new territory, not quite yet though. And now Queen h5, swinging the Queen over, um, asking White if he'd like to trade. Actually, Queen h5 is a bit of a mistake, and I think the. Let me check the master. Yeah. The only game to reach this position was won by White, though of course he does outrate his opponent by 200 plus points. Um, 218. So, um, so yeah, Queen h5 is a bit of a mistake. What did he played Knight takes e6? Yeah, the point is Knight takes e6 is almost winning for White, or at least leads to a very strong position. And the point is Black has to recapture with the p pawn, which is not 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 optimal. I get you get the b file, but yeah, the bishop is doing and the knight as well blocking these a4 ideas, doing a good job. And eventually some e5 will come your pawn structure here won't be having a lot of fun and this pawn can be weak so rook ad1 and white is going to be cruising and um, why can he not take with other things let's say queen takes e2 this is obviously losing let's get that out of the way here i have the intermezzo with knight takes e7 check and i'm going to pick up your queen and, uh, and i'm going to be a piece up now bishop takes c6 the problem with this move it runs into queen takes h5 and um, g takes h5, I'm not going to look at this further, this is trash. <laughs> and after knight takes h5, I have simply bishop takes a7, and I'm up a pawn. Yeah, I can't be that greedy, there's nothing here. And if rook takes c6, again we have takes, not going to analyze g takes because that's so ugly. So knight takes h5, and now we have knight d5, threatening a 4 coming as shoni. So rook e8. And now I can simply take. <laughs> you might be able to take here, but I attack you. You don't have this square because I can simply take as well. You don't want to lose this very strong bishop that's defending your king and leave me with this strong bishop. So you don't, of course, want to play bishop c3 here. So you go bishop g7. Well, I have bishop a4 here, and that's winning an exchange. Um, e6, for example, I just take and thank you for the exchange. If something crazy like crazy like this, I just take d7 and I can take your guy over here. And if you play this, I simply have this protecting both pieces. So going back, that means that knight takes c4, knight takes c6 would force b takes c6, and after rook d1, white clearly has an advantage. e5 is coming at some point a7 is weak, these pawns don't make such a good impression, and yeah, of course if c5 occurs we have a brilliant square over here, so yeah, this is not, uh, I misclicked c5, but yeah, it helped show, showcase some points, so yeah, this is not optimal at all for, uh, for white, uh, for black, instead Samir did not find this and went for knight f3, sensible, but yeah, knight takes c6 was more incisive, and now just some normal moves, b6, very normal this kind of structure, you prepare some c5, you cover c5 further and all of that. Rook a d1, knight e5, also very normal, you're trying to trade, queen takes e5. And now f4, very sensible, queen a5. And yeah, here white still has an advantage, let's be clear, because like for example after bishop f2, Preparing e5 or insinuating e5 bishop c6. There is this e5 and yeah white is white is just fine here you take back and Yeah, there will be pressure here. This bishop is nice all of this favors white Instead he went knight d5. This is kind of too trade happy so after takes takes and b5 um, Thank you bishop for defending b5 by the way <laughs> Um, yeah, this isn't so optimal for white. He went bishop d4, further trading. He should have ju just went for c3 and calmed the position down, maybe played this, I don't know. Just considered his options. Rook d4, bishop d4, two trade happy, takes, takes, queen b6, and now queen f2. Queen e3, I would say, is more natural. Like, yeah, why would you go to f2? It's a bit more of a passive square, right? Just queen e3 seems more natural. But anyway, he goes queen f2. White is still okay here if he plays c3. But instead he blunders with a3. And after a4 he just loses a pawn. 
because of this tactic obviously which is what occurs in the game so we'll so the tactic is this your rook your queen is overloaded here it's defending this pawn and this rook so rook takes c2 makes use of that so samar just blundered here instead c3 prevents rook takes c2 blocks off this rook and now after a4 bishop d1 there is this a3 um, of course you can't play b3 for example which would be a terrible move anyway blocking in the bishop maybe b4 makes more sense but in either case we have rook takes c3 let me just add it here rook takes c3 um, but here you don't have to play that after a3 you can simply play e5 and if this occurs you just take back and your queen would be defending c3 so that's absolutely fine and e5 again you can't take because taking here is possible so yeah just overall more more natural and at least not losing a pawn in the game he just lost a pawn and yeah Najar's technique you just give Najar a pawn in the end game his technique was almost flawless here rookie one asking uh, Najar if he wants to go into the bishop end game which might be a draw even though it's a pawn up um, just asking questions instead of five is two two um, and e6 here is a real nice move uh, f5 is just uh, too optimistic about the chances to get counterplay using this f5 break takes takes and now bishop a8 bishop b7 is much more natural because you have bishop a6 but okay bishop a8 yeah, and now king e3 is the final mistake he had to stay king e2 now you see why king e3 was the final mistake because of the following tactic and again the bishop on a8 is a liability to this rook you might not see how this is relevant but just watch b4 will you not take of course you have to take because if you don't i just take take and take so takes has to be played and now the brilliant a3 will you take here well this is what happened what will you do play this well hello and um whoops so yeah takes has to be played and now check and the bishop is won so that's why it was important here not to go to e3 but instead to e2 because then taking would not come with check as it did in the game but okay here white is already struggling but yeah king e3 was just the final mistake he could have held on a bit more and now he's just down a rook uh, down a bishop and yeah najar will obviously win this so pretty nice game by najar some missed chances by Samer, but yeah pretty much a crush by Najar uh, at least in the end game yeah but Samer blundered to be honest if he had he played c3 I think I think by the way um not I think but I'm pretty sure <laughs> the position after c3 and this this should favor why black long term because white is really fending off for his life here but objectively it's kind of equal okay so we looked at three games we have three more so let's go for Masarani against Samer this was uh, Samer I meant Muhammad Silman this was a crush by Muhammad let's see the game knight of three knight of six Finketo and he plays this kind of reverse Grunfeld um, uh, Silman does and now with bishop g4 recommended is c4 I'm pretty sure that's what Chess Explained recommends as well um, about this Catalan with d4 without including... Now you have just to go c4 and go for the options here. Um, instead c3 is rather passive. And uh, well, this is let's say the style of Maserani because this is what he did in other games. Okay, let's, let's say this is fine. So e6 and now he plays really slowly with b3. He's kind of going for a Kohli Zuckertort, but the way Black is playing, he got his bishop out. That's already an achievement. He got c5 in. That's his second achievement. He has his knights out. Playing b3, like insisting on going for this Kohli Zuckertort where I'll fiend Keto here. It's not really a Kohli Zuckertort anyway because <laughs> there's this bishop here. It's just really slow what he's doing. So Black already has all of these achievements and White is taking too much time. Instead here, just knight b2, play rook e1, play e4, play something and b3 here bishop d6 was an option but i like what um Selman played Selman almost played perfectly actually we'll see that in the graphs section um so yeah so he took 
took c takes d4 and now here bishop b4 was an interesting option the point is to maybe even do some of this later on but okay he goes bishop d6 more sensible and now queen d3 preparing maybe e4 knight c3 i don't know but yeah just better was bishop b2 and uh, knight c3 rook c1 just get your pieces out queen d3 ran into bishop f5 now you could have just castled and played bishop f5 later but okay playing bishop f5 immediately makes sense but now after check queen d7 queen takes d7 here he should have played knight c3 the point is i want you to take me mr black and uh, if something like a6 now i take and at least i gained a tempo in a sense right Instead, he took himself, and that's kind of just helping, like if you compare this position with the, the position we, where was the position we looked at? Yeah, here white can in, get in bishop d2, and black would have to play a6, which is not such a useful move. But here, knight c3, um, uh, what happened in the game, knight c3, now black has the incisive option of playing rook h c8, instead of playing like this, uh, slow a6 so yeah he's just missing uh, missing some tempos here i just realized we i removed the yeah i just removed one of the one of the scenes here so let me see if i can get that get that back okay <laughs> yeah so anyway rook h c8 bishop b2 rook c6 and now f3 really slow play he should have tried some of this and tried to trade pieces on the c file f3 just not optimal now comes bishop b4 and again he should have tried knight d1 with the idea of going knight c3 but he insists on the c file and this is simply incorrect um last chance here was knight a4 try to trade pieces on the c file instead he goes for e4 and this just loses tactically takes takes and takes, 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 takes. And this endgame, black is up a pawn and he has the more active c file. So white's completely losing. Rook f2, rook d3, attacking d4 as well. Now you could have tried king f1, but he tries this, getting activity. Uh, and the c file okay but yeah black is just two pawns up now then i will just continue a bit with this game actually he still could have been in the game after b4 check then the king would have to move back and bishop b3 and yeah one of these double one of these pawns is doubled one of them is isolated and the bishop is quite strong in attacking this pawn so maybe white could have held on a bit here by the way here you cannot take because of check and thank you very much now white is winning um, but instead he played bishop d3 check and thank you very much you can resign and this is what white did so yeah just very passive play here and yeah actually when i show you the graphs of this game you'll see what happened uh, Salman almost played perfectly okay our star studded lineup with assis will have uh, assis and akram will have to wait we have sayer against joe so Joe is playing some different openings than what he's used to. He almost always plays the Aliyachen. I guess in classical he can't play the Aliyachen all the time, so he chooses different stuff. Um, he plays the Exchange French. Well, Saïr plays the Exchange French. Normal stuff, normal stuff. Um, if you want to be aggressive as Black, you can't choose to play a system with this stuff. Um, and you play bishop g4, knight c6, queen d7, and you castle long, and like knight e7. Um, yeah, this is an option, and actually something I've taught to one of my students, but... Okay, Joe decides to play it safe. Normal stuff. Here h6. Bishop g4 immediately is an option. If I can press it, but yeah, he decides to go h6. Now knight b5 trying to win the bishop this is all fine white does get the bishop pair but it's almost irrelevant in this position because the structure is so symmetrical and there are like no open open anything <laughs> there is this open file here but yeah black easily trades the exchange french not very inspiring 
if you want to play the exchange French, maybe see Magnus Carlsen's games. He, but that guy, <laughs> he's the world champion for a reason. He makes, he milks uh, water out of stone, right? Yeah, so uh, difficult to play like him. Anyway, Bishop G6, and now Knight E5 was a possibility. Just letting Black trade, right? Knight E5 is so natural. So you force Bishop takes D3 and Queen takes D3. And now you have basically the knight out and the queen out. Instead here he played bishop takes g6, which is really helping black. Maybe he liked the look of these doubled pawns over here, but yeah, this is actually helping black because he gets a lot of activity. Knight e5 and now g5. Another option was knight e4, defending that way. But okay, g5 is completely fine as well, cementing the spawn over here, can't be wrong. Um, and now b3, very smart development plan it's to go this way and this way I like it instead something like bishop e3 would have run into knight c6 and now yeah black is starting to be better so we played bishop uh, b3 and now c5 came um, knight fd7 was an option as well as knight c6 um, but not, uh, no knight c6 is not such a strong option because now a4 and this would come you can play this, um, uh, look f8 to get out of the pin, but still white should have a nice position. Knight takes e5, bishop a3 would just be winning for, well actually it's not winning because there are complications connected with queen takes and knight takes g4 and that, but yeah white should be, white should be better. Okay instead c5 is fine I guess, he plays bishop b2, nah, this is just equal, equal. And now b4. Um, look a e1, getting it the rook to the open file makes more sense, but okay, b4. Okay, he wants to control the square. Fine by me. a5, a3, defending. And rook f7 here was an interesting move to try some of this or some of that. Um, interesting rook uh, lateral movement, but he goes rook a b8. Now bishop c3, defending this guy, and rook b7 comes. Again, rook f7 was a possibility. You go here, for example, that's a position. And if b takes a a5, you don't lose a pawn. You have the very powerful knight e4, and c5 is coming. Some attack here. Yeah, this is just better for black. So b takes a5 cannot be played. So b3, and now he plays b rook b7. And now, again, this kind of... <coughs> Sorry. I was leaning back too much. Yeah, so this kind of stuff would be met by knight here. Okay, so rook a e1 and now queen c7. Um, rook b f7 was an interesting try. Queen c7, now queen e5 trading. Yeah, this end game it should obviously favor um, white. And he doesn't take here, of course, because that would run to f3. Let me show you guys. Um, actually, would it run to f3 here? Is there a problem with... Let me check briefly. f3. Ah, yeah, yeah. The, the rook remains trapped. So, I was thinking of this. Um, but you can simply take... If, it, if the... <laughs> Yeah, and here the rook remains trapped. So you're kind of playing a, a rook down here. Was that the best? No, that wasn't the best. Okay, uh, I'm sorry guys, I didn't analyze this, and when I al analyze on my own... Ah, fuck! Ph2, of course. Yeah, I don't get into thinking mode when I'm analyzing, I'm just uh, repeating what I've memorized, basically. <laughs> Of course I thought about it before, but when I'm speaking on video it's memorized. Anyway, <laughs> okay, so we'll go through this um, this endgame a bit quickly. Here bishop d6 was an alternative to pin, but okay, bishop d4, all of this is fine, rook e5 was another option to try this, yeah, just absolutely normal. And now he had the option of going for counterplay with rook a2, instead he went c5 going for counterplay, but this kind of improves white's position to be honest. And now after h4, with devious threats, this is the devious threat, 
h4 is intending a cute checkmate. So Joe prevents that, but now f4 with oomph. And now this is coming. Oomph, oomph. Yeah, knight d6 was the last chance for Joe to kind of defend. So already here, rook a2 should have been played for Joe to defend. All of this just. Uh, yeah, just is not going in black's favor all of this especially the end game so now he plays king f2 king g2 was also an option um at least keep an eye on this okay he goes king f2 and yeah this is just lost now gets the king in the game and this is actually a mate yeah and black resigned here before allowing white to checkmate or did he allow white to checkmate i do not know Anyway, that's what the notation says, so yeah. So um, uh, yeah, I said, I did mention Joe will be furious from losing to um, Sire. Yeah, um, Joe definitely had uh, bigger uh, intentions. Now he did do fine, I'll tell you that at the end. Um, in the end he did do quite well in the tournament, but uh, yeah, I think he wanted to go for first or second at least. Yeah, so this was kind of a big blow for Joe, but hopefully he'll bounce back in round 8. I already know the result, and maybe you can't. <laughs> ASMR! <laughs> okay, and now for the final game of this video. Try to run through it a bit quickly, even though it was quite rich. It's a cease against Akram. Let's see how Akram was able to draw a cease. So e4, c5, and now knight e3! Okay, so what about is this a knight to a3? So I think as he is thought he'll try to avoid Akram's preparation. And yeah, he just goes with knight a3. The, Z the Zviagintsev, I think it's called, after the famous Grandmaster, he I think maybe even wrote a book about it. Um Leech just calls it something else. They call it the Kronberger variation, yeah. And against this Kronberger Zviagintsev, you have to play a not half, but a6. And whoa, well, you already knew the result. <laughs> well, a6 and uh, c3 uh, morphs into some weird kind of Alpen. Um, the Alpen, of course, being the Siciliano uh, or anti Siciliano. Um, so, a6, the point is to play b5 and prevent bishop b5 um, as well as knight b5. And if you play b5 to prevent knight c4 and bishop c4 and try to think Kato as such. Um, so, as well as the argument is that since white wasted kind of a move, putting the knight on a3, it has to relocate to c4 eventually, um, we can waste, we can afford to waste a move as well. Um, yeah, but instead, Akram goes for g6, trying to go back to the hyper accelerated, which he knows so well, and that's completely fine. And now he goes for d5, fine as well, kind of going into some weird Alpen. Knight c6 trying to control d4 was also interesting. c3, by the way, of course, preparing this d4. So d5, e takes, queen takes, and now bishop c4. Now bishop c4 I didn't like so much because it really runs into queen e4 check, and after bishop d2, bishop e2, white doesn't have knight c3 to kick away this queen, and if you play something, something like d3, white is probably fine with going here, uh, black is probably fine. And uh, of course, after queen e2, this endgame is also completely fine for black. So bishop c4 I did not like so much. Instead, Akram doesn't make use of this chance and goes queen d8, which is fine. B queen e4 is rather forcing, and maybe he was already trying to play for a win here since he saw knight a3 and who wouldn't. So um, Assis goes for d4, c takes, and now knight takes d4. A very fine move, but more interesting to me, at least, also as someone who plays kind of the Alpen from the Mora, um, was just to go for development and castles. Of course, d takes c3 is not possible because of the familiar tact of taking, and now wherever the king moves, you take the queen. Also here, by the way, queen b3 um, is another option, asking this guy, what are you doing about your life? And e6 is a kind of concession because the bishop would be locked in. Anyway, knight takes d4 occurred, which is also fine, knight c6, queen f3, attacking both of these thingamajigs, and one move only defends them, but now comes bishop b5 check, making use of white's really strong development, right? White is really ahead in development, while black is a bit behind. Akram chooses king f8, knight d7 I think was more sensible, yeah, because you're able to play a6 later on, like after castles you have a6, 
okay here um, black needs as you can see by the arrows he needs one more move to castle so white is really happy here but yeah black maybe is okay-ish bishop d7 by the way would lose to queen takes b7 and thank you for the pawn and the position is bad as well instead he goes king f8 instead of my recommended knight d7 which is acceptable and now queen e2 um, an option was queen g3 but this is going into a different direction anyway queen e2 more this is a light squared direction while this is a dark squared direction both directions make sense but okay queen e2 is fine a6 as we said you remember on move 2 a6 was a possibility to meet the Kronenberger maybe the best theoretical move um, so now it's played now and after bishop a4 of course you don't want to go to any of these two squares because the knight will simply take the bishop you don't really want that as white so we go back and now after b5 we go to b3 where you are attacking f7 but black succeeded in gaining some queenside space and now he can play this and be happy about his development so he's attacking your pawn not really re relevant but yeah maybe something you should consider so of course white will cast in anyway knight c6 trying to trade off pieces and white obliges he could have refused to by playing knight f3 but okay f taking was fine and now bishop f4 knight c2 is an alternative but bishop f4 is smarter you just develop you're, you're uh, he's going to play knight c2 later and now bishop f6 intending to play king g7 get your knight somehow out of the way get the rook here um but instead actually it turns out black can kind of delay this i analyzed this with a very high depth stockfish um queen d7 the point is you have queen f5 at some point um, you can play rook d8 and you can delay the development okay but bishop f6 makes more sense to a human and again knight c2 was possible but of course rook f1 and getting the rook in the center now rook a d1 is much more natural but rook f1 okay you're just getting the rook in the center you might be insinuating some things on e7 um later on but yeah so rook f1 queen c8 similar ideas to queen d7 which i recommended with this stuff um so yeah i should have played this before bishop f6 but anyway bishop f6 is more natural again knight c2 is an option but he goes for the more sensible putting the rooks in the center king g7 knight c2 now rook a7 very smart move preparing rook d7 just lateral movement of the rook defending and now knight b4 attacking this guy and the bishop retreats keeping the bishop pair now akram has this weird problem where when he keeps the bishop pair it's wrong when he removes that it's right <laughs> um i mean when yeah, you get what i mean so here he kept the bishop pair but he should not have kept the bishop pair and when he should keep the bishop pair he does not so <laughs> yeah um here he should have actually played rook d7 and tried to trade off pieces bishop a8 cannot be faulted too much but yeah anyway um antoine tries to win the bishop pair immediately with knight d5 asking the bishop please take me and asking this bishop i will take you if you don't take me um instead the peculiar knight d3 with some such intentions was actually a very interesting move but okay knight d5 is more forcing and it gets white a very stable advantage white has the bishop pair he has the rooks in the center but for what it's worth at least black has developed here bishop c2 preventing entirely knight f5 and asking black do you really want to play e6 to prepare knight f5 and um, that was a warranted move instead he went for h3 which is a bit slow allowing knight f5 now he goes the here but after e6 um yeah this position is actually okay for black by the way here he should have played rook uh, d2 and not ventured into giving up the bishop pair so antoine also gave up the bishop pair at the wrong time and um, by the way here you cannot do this because of thank you very much so e takes f5 and now bishop e5 adding some pressure but akram finds the right defense and now queen e3 was really interesting hitting the rook on a7 and preparing queen d4 but instead antoine trades and even tries to trade some more now this end game is simply completely equal actually after h4 black can even try to be better with rook f8 and uh, yeah maybe even some of that stuff and maybe even a later g4 
Okay, instead Akram went for rook c8, which is also fine. King f6, sacking the spawn but getting activity. Very clever play by Akram, very mature play. Um, rook f e7 check, and here he should have simply went back though and accepted a draw or like we asked to a draw. He, he kept going for activity, but here white starts to play for a win um, because these pawns become kind of weak. Yeah, so he trades off one of these pawns, checks here. I'm just going through this endgame a bit quickly. Here, by the way, this is not working. White is up a rook here. So you have to play this to um, uncover the attack on uh, c3. But yeah, rook d, d3 defends, and white will push through with the king eventually. Now, he won't be able to play this because of check, but eventually he'll find a way to do something clever. Yeah, and finally he decides to trade, and yeah, this end game. Um, actually, going back here, rook e d seven was an interesting try, um, just to be able to play some of this at some point and try to climb up, um, or this followed by c four and try to climb up. <laughs> yeah, but anyway, rook e two was played, and here. In this position is I do not know why King F4 and Delt filtrating was not played. Study played Rook D7. By the way, uh, they were both on the increment here, as I was told. So excuse the mistakes, but of course this is the only way really to win for White. Okay, Rook C3 check, and now finally King F4. Rook C4 would have been much better. This is kind of uh, well, of course Akram is a very strong player, but yeah, we have to use the phrase Potser sees check, Potser gives check. Because that's just making the king go where it wants. So rook c4, cut off the king. And here white will almost find it impossible to make progress. Rook c3 check instead. The king it gets in. Um, king g5 was a possibility here. After rook g4 check, just king h6. And rook d6, rook takes g6 is coming. And if rook c6, um, again, some of that is also coming. Yeah, instead he went king e5, which should also be winning, rook g4, um, defending the pawn this way, but this is very strange defense, and now rook d6, king c3, and they just agreed to withdraw, obviously king f6 was winning, I don't know why this one played, f4 here, maybe he was afraid of that, but there's simply rook d4, and if you take me, I take you, and this is obviously a win, and if you play f3, I can also take you, and this is a win. The spawn might seem far advanced, but it's not going to be a problem. And actually, if you want to be safe, you can play this and bank on this pawn instead. Either case, white is winning here. So, yeah. Um, nice draw by Akram. It was a, definitely a topsy-turvy game. I don't think black was never better, but there was some points where he, it was a draw, some points where it was a win for a cease, so a draw is a rather fair result. Now let's take a look at the engine evaluations that Akram really likes. So yeah, the one Akram against a cease, take a look here. Yeah. So draw some point, a win at some point, much better at some point, but yeah, eventually Akram drew. Um, this game, I told you, Salman almost played it. Oh, you can't really see it. I'm sorry, guys. Shoot. Yeah, Salman played an almost perfect game. Let me do it even better. A very impressive game by Salman. Let me show you the graph of Assis and... Uh, the graph was upward, so you could see it. Not not any black things, uh, not any black troughs or peaks, uh, but uh, but yeah. So you could. Oh, there was a black trough here. Yeah, Akram was a bit better. Yeah, yeah. When he could play h6, I think that's what the engine likes. Yeah. So um, some black troughs. Okay, here we saw Maida against Habash. Yep, perfection, almost. And uh, Sai against Joe, really stable kind of game, bit of an advantage here and there, but then, whoop, Joe blunders in the end game. 
Uh, and the like this endgame is so tough to play anyway. The bishop is just so much stronger than this knight. So can't blame Joe really. Um Samir against Najar. Yeah. He had some options in the opening. Queen h5 was not really a good line. But yeah, then Najar took over after the blunder. And he outplayed Samir as well, of course. And um uh, Mudalal yeah, Mudella against Ablazi is a very complex game. Both sides had advantages, but it was not to be. Okay, so I'll be deleting these analyses because we don't want the engine analysis. I just show it for this video and because Akram, Dr. Wathazdaq, you, he requested it. Yeah, so pretty nice round, guys. And uh, yeah, stick for round eight, which I hope to release tomorrow. All right, guys, take care.